Welcome to a mini lecture about how to use colorability to distinguish between knots. This is an application of theorem 2.5. So here is theorem 2.5 itself, straight out of the notes. The property of being colorable modulo n is a well-defined invariant of links. And it's a property, right? Uh, so how can we apply this theorem? Uh, we do it as we do in the corollary below, which I've already left some underlines in. Uh, the corollary says that if L1, some link L1, can be colored modulo n, but your other link L2 cannot be colored modulo n, then L1 and L2 are not equivalent. So if we can prove that uh, two things have different coloring properties, then they're different links. Um, how does the proof of this theorem work? Well, you should be able to guess. We prove it by checking that the three Reidemeister moves do not affect colorability. So if we have two diagrams related by a Reidemeister move, one has a coloring modulo n, we prove that the other one has a coloring modulo n, and vice versa. But what I want to, well, uh, it's very important for you to study the proof of this yourselves. But what I want to show you is how to apply it. And let's apply it in an example we ought to have been desperate to prove for the last two weeks, uh, which is that the trefoil and the figure eight are not equivalent. These are our two simplest knots that we've seen. Let's prove that they are genuinely different. How will we do it? Uh, we do this by showing that the trefoil can be colored modulo 3, but that the figure 8 cannot. And we will show, and let's, let's start referring to these as 3, 1 and 4, 1 for brevity. We will show that 3, 1 uh, can be colored mod n, mod 3, but 4, 1 cannot. Why 3? Because it's the one that makes these two facts true. It's the choice of n that makes this argument possible. So let's show that 3, 1 can be colored mod 3, but 4, 1 cannot. Uh, a coloring of 3, 1 mod 3 is shown. Uh, so, I know a colouring of 3, 1, mod 3, so I'll just write it down. It looks like that. Uh, let's check that it is a colouring by checking the colouring equations at the crossings. Uh, so, what goes on at the green crossing, the colouring equation says that 0 plus 2, let's move this name a little further away because it's distracting, there we go. The green equation says that 0 plus 2 should be congruent to 2 times 1. Uh, the pink equation says that 1 plus 2 should be congruent to 2 times 0. And the orange equation says that 0 plus 1 should be congruent to 2 times 2, all modulo 3. And indeed, each one of these is true. The only one that's not really, really trivial, uh, well, the pink and orange ones are both a little bit non-trivial because it requires us to reduce, um, to, take, to take the remainder after dividing by 3. Um, so these are all true, um, and the labels are distinct. The labels are not all congruent mod 3. So now what's left for us to do, we've shown that 3, 1 can be colored mod 3. We need to show that 4, 1 cannot be colored mod 3. So let's do that. 
four one cannot be coloured mod three. For if it were for if it could then we could color this diagram if it were we would be, if it could be colored we would be able to color this diagram we would be able to find a label a a label b a label c and a label d uh, that form the coloring of the diagram So let's show that this isn't possible. And the way we're going to show it's not possible is by looking at all the colouring equations. The blue one, the green one, the pink one, and the orange one. What do these say? Uh, well, the blue equation tells us that A plus C is congruent to 2D and the green tells us that B plus D is congruent to 2A pink tells us that A plus B is congruent to 2C and orange tells us that C plus D is congruent to 2B mod 3 And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start manipulating these equations until I learn some new piece of information. And I'm going to start by cancelling out A from the blue and pink equations. So let's do, let's do blue minus pink. That gives us uh, a plus c minus a minus b congruent to 2d minus 2c. And how does this all pan out when you're done? Well, the a's will cancel. Uh, I can move this c over to the right to get minus 3c, but I'm working mod 3. So minus 3c is just 0. So the a's cancel, the c's cancel, and um, then then I get minus b congruent to 2d, which, if you think about it, tells us that b is congruent to d. Uh, let's do another one. Uh, let's do let's do blue minus orange. What does that give us? It gives us a plus c minus c minus d congruent to 2d minus 2b, uh, i.e. the a's will cancel and the minus d move it over here we get 3d which is 0 so we get a congruent to minus 2b, ah, but minus 2b is just b, mod 3. So we get a is congruent to b. Uh, let's do one more. Let's do, hmm, which one should we do? Let's do green minus orange. Green minus orange gives. Can you see where this is going, by the way? Um, green minus orange gives. Well, let's write it out B plus D minus C minus D congruent to 2A minus 2B. 
i.e., well, I'll uh, let's let's do this dynamically. Okay, the d's are going to cancel out, and then uh, this b, I can move it over and replace this with minus with with minus three, and well, minus three is zero, so I get minus c congruent to two a. Let's take minus both sides. C is congruent to minus 2a, well minus 2 is 1. So we get C is congruent to a. I.e. C is congruent to a. So what have I got? I've got a is congruent to b, is congruent to c, and b is congruent to d. So all my labels are congruent. So the colouring is constant. In other words, it's not a colouring. So this is not a colouring. And that's a contradiction. And we've distinguished, finally, the knots 3-1 and 4-1.